after World War II, uh, right after uh, Japan bombed Pearl Harbor the, the following day, you know, they bombed the Philippines. And so uh, the first Filipino uh, infantry, uh, they call it California Zone because uh, they were formed in California. So you have the first Filipino infantry, the second Filipino infantry, and you have what they call the Bahá'u'lláh Group, which is the first special, as they call it. And these people were all formed, I think they trained, if I can remember close, they were trained in Camp Roberts, Camp uh, Hunter Leggett, and Camp Cook. Mm -hmm. And some of them were in the Fort Ord. And that's usually where they took their basic training. But they call this California Zone because that was formed in California. But mainly uh, Hunter Leggett, Camp Cook, Camp Roberts. And I think one now is Van Morbid. But what they did is like, since the blade was very, very important, they uh, all everyone in the first Filipino infantry and the second Filipino infantry and the first, first reconnaissance was trained in the use of the the bolo, and that became their favorite weapon, and they always received uh, bolo instruction, or whether you want to call it a screamer, you want to call it an you want to call it, but it was bolo training that everyone would receive, whether in the first Filipino infantry or second Filipino infantry. My uncle. Uh, from 1942, I uh, was in the military service from 1942 to 46, and he was one of, the, along with Captain Ledesma, they were the ones that uh, trained other cattery to teach the bolo fighting. This is a kind of a rare picture of him, and this is uh, again receiving uh, first Filipino infantry receiving uh, instruction in bolo fighting, and uh, and then of course they were shipped to, you know, to the uh, many of them were shipped to uh, Australia. And those are the people, what they call the First Reconnaissance Battalion. And that's like Mano Leo, Bahana group. That was that group. And, uh, of course, the First Regiment, the, the Lagang Muna, right? Uh -huh. uh, that, that was the First Regiment. Of course, uh, Solon oh, first is the Second Regiment. And then from these two, they took people in the First Reconnaissance Battalion. This is just the shoulder patch of the First Philippine Infantry. And if you look closely, the three stars are from, you know, the three major islands of... Uh, the Luzon, uh, the Visayas, and, and Mindanao. And for the, the shield here, they took the, uh, the Moro Chris, and they took a Igorot shield. These are the two uh, most predominant warlock tribes in the Philippines, so they used the, the symbol of those two groups to put, and Langanuno means always first. You know. Correct. Yes. And uh, this is just, a, most of them were <coughs> trained, and uh, uh, the legacy now goes on to what they call the first uh, Filipino Marine Corps. They're now using it in the tent because you, if you look closer, the grass is pretty high, and you cannot shoot position-wise over there because the grass is so high. Therefore, you either might take an MP uh, MP5 or it could be an M15 or 16, but most of the uh, a lot of the play is in close quarter. Um, the two on guy he's training him now. You know, this is this is a picture over here when he trained more than five thousand U.S. Marines in wow. the Philippines for that is joint amazing. military uh, exercise, martial art exercise, and he was the one that taught him. And uh, they use the Pekiti Tertia system in that, in that method. That's a picture of two on guy. This is a uh, kind of an interesting print. This is a uh, passing. This is the, uh, the 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 gorillas during that time. Oh, they wow. were they were called uh, Alamo Scouts. Mm -hmm. Was one group, and the other one was called Filipino Scouts. But the, what they did was uh, they show them by their praise. You can tell that this guy here is using a Zanzibar, so he's mm -hmm. more what I what I. As this guy is using a Talibong, so he must be from Panay. Wow. However, you know it could be a guy fooling us. But exactly. at that picture, but that's a that is a typical bolo from Panay. It's, it's called a tali, Talibong, and uh, he's using the Zanzibar. If you look closely, you have to see the dip over here. So he has to be from Samar, mm -hmm. and these people are just looking on uh, the grill tactics. This is kind of an interesting thing. I thought it was kind of to see it. See, I'm going to read this to you. See, the world has taken great strides in the recent years in the mechanics of killing men. The machine gun will kill a mile, but unfortunately, one cannot see a mile in the jungles of Mindanao. That's this island in the southern Philippines. And on a crowded, twisted uh, jungle trail, the Chris of the Moros still remain potent weapons, sufficient dead and deadly for all practical purpose. In fact, for close hand-to-hand -hand work, the wavy edge crisp produces a wound that never heals and is one of the most terrible weapons to be evolved by man. The Moros have had centuries of practice with the crisp. They become quite proficient, and with the crisp they can sever a man in two with a blow. 
incredible it may, it may seem, they can also, with one blow of the crisp, cut through the chill steel barrel of a Springfield rifle. That's just time to show you that the crisp. But I think it's, it could be the Barong, it could be a sure. Talibong, it could be anything, but it just goes to show you. Now, this one was even written before. And who uh, wrote this, Gert? This is called the Men and Sun Helmets. Well, this is even before World War II. Hmm. This I, I, I kept on because I thought it was always interesting. It says, certain tribes in the South Pacific, the Philippines, for example, have developed their own system of jiu-jitsu, which they developed over the years with no outside help. Goodbye. Take care, Dory. Good night, Dory. Uh, there are, after all, only a certain number of things that can be done with the human body in combat, and many people have cataloged them independently. You know, see, what they're <laughs> trying to say is that... Uh, uh, Completely natural form of self-defense is proven by the fact that systems strikingly similar to jiu-jitsu have been evolved in various unrelated societies in the world. Trappers in, in the Canadian North Woods living in, in virtually total isolation have developed techniques of fighting that have their identical counterpart in jiu-jitsu. And that's why it comes when it says certain tribes in the South Pacific, the Philippines for example, mm -hmm. have their own system of jiu-jitsu which they have developed over the years with no outside help. There are all... There are, after all, only certain numbers of things that can be done with the human body. Right. body. This is a, kind of a shows a, a picture of uh, when they, uh, this is Los Banos. Sure. If you're in the paratroopers, they have a uh, drop zone name after this. And this is the American, uh, telling about the American soldiers. And this, this is supposedly taken, I believe, in 1945, Filipino guerrillas in the liberation of Los Banos. That's a, mm -hmm. That was a uh, prison camp, and it was also... A, this is kind of an interesting thing. That's why I hope they, they do a good job in that big raid because that's, a, uh, that's when they raided the that, that uh, Capabana Tuan uh, prison Cabana camp. Tuan. Cabana yeah. Tuan. Cabana Tuan sure. prison, yeah. This was just as, as a spectacular, mm -hmm. you know. Um, see, among the internment camps for civilians uh, set up by the Japanese in the Philippines during World War II, one uh, it was one year little town of Los Banos. In, mm -hmm. When I was 101st Airborne Division, we have a drop zone named after Los Banos. Wow. 42 miles southeast of Manila. You know, uh, I'm going to read this. I'll skip down to you. It says uh, there were many missionaries, nuns, and priests of various orders, and a few were U.S. Navy nurses who had been incarcerated since the capture in Corredo in 1942. In February 1945, the 11th Airborne Division and six Filipino guerrilla units operating on Luzon devised a plan to liberate the camp for that purpose formed in Los Banos. The task force under Robert Soli. The group consisted of approximately 2,000 paratroopers, amphibious tractors, battalion units, and ground forces, as well as some 300 guerrillas. Jeez. The key to the rescue was an assault force coming of reinforcement of an airborne company who were to jump on the camp while the reconnaissance force, approximately 90 selected guerrillas, mm -hmm. okay, 32 U.S. Army enlisted men and one officer pinned the guards down. The remainder of the force was to launch a diversitary attack and send an amphibious reinforcement and be prepared to evacuate the internees either uh, overland or across the lake. The bulk of the Filipino guerrillas were to assist by providing guides and marking both the drop zone and the beach landing mm. site. This plan was based on intelligence provided by the guerrillas, <laughs> observation of the camp, guard location, and routine, some supplemented by a, a detailed map of Los Banos camp, which had been drawn by a civilian internee who had managed to escape. The group learned that, that 80 guards and a well-armed garrison maintained the camp were backed up by eight to 15,000 troops who were several hours, several march uh, hours away. Using this information, the reconnaissance force was directed to approach the area by way of Manila uh, and whatever that name of the city is, right? Mm -hmm. under, the, under the cover of darkness on 21, 22 February in preparation of attack on uh, 23 February. Mm -hmm. At dawn, just before the planes were uh, within sight, uh, bearing the, the paratroopers who were shoots would signal the attack. An alert Japanese sentry spotted a guerrilla among uh, moving into position and fired a shot to alert the garrison. The attack was forced into motion as a guerrilla wielded a bolo knife, quickly silenced the guard 
while the others in the reconnaissance force kill most of the sentries who remain. By the time the airborne company could join the assault, most of the guards had either been killed or driven from their posts. See? When the remainder of the parent airborne battalion pack howitzers arrived by amphibious tra uh, tractors, and the remaining pillboxes were taken and the force turned in its attention to the sole reason for the entire mission. The liberation of 2,147 attorneys was from almost certain death. That's how many people they rescued. By 1.30 p.m. that day, the last attorney, the paratroopers, the guerrillas, had been evacuated from the Los Banos. Casualties, casualties, uh, casualties, let's see, uh, casualties consisted of three guerrillas killed, six wounded, two U.S. Army paratroopers killed, and four wounded. Apparently, the entire Japanese garrison was killed. <laughs> yeah. see, certain, uh, clearly shown in the painting is a gorilla armed with a bolo knife devastating a Japanese sentry of his rifle, crouching behind the foliage and clutching the U.S. 30 caliber M1903 sentry rifles are the other members of the force waiting to assist the 11th Airborne landing in the front of the camp. That is awesome.